benchmarking is effectively a way of measuring performance by comparing the performance of an individual or, or a division to the performance of perhaps another division within the business or comparing our performance against the performance of a competitor. So we are benchmarking or comparing ourselves to some other company. And there's a number of different types of benchmarking which can be applied. The first is internal. This is where another division of the company is used as the benchmark. So, very straightforward forward example. Suppose we are an organization that produces and sells both books and DVDs. Then perhaps we could measure the performance of the book division by comparing them to our DVD department. We could look at the return on capital employed for each of the two divisions, their residual income, the number of customer complaints in each of those two divisions. So we are looking at the book department and saying, has their performance measured up to the standards set by the DVD department? The other way in which we can benchmark is competitor benchmarking. This should be self-explanatory, really. This is where we use a direct competitor compare performance. So for example, if you're running Tesco's, then you may use competitor benchmarking by comparing your performance to a company like Sainsbury's, because Tesco's and Sainsbury's would be direct competitors. And by doing that, you have a good indication of how you are performing in relation to the marketplace. Finally, our benchmarking can be process or activity benchmarking. In this case, we're still comparing ourselves to a different company, but not a direct competitor. Instead, we are looking at the performance of a particular activity within our business and comparing that to the same or a similar activity in a different organization. So we'll just note that down. We compare the performance of a particular activity with another company who is not a direct competitor. Okay, so they are the three ways in which we can use benchmarking as part of our performance measurement. We'll finish up then by just looking at an exercise. We're asked, very simply, what might be the advantages and disadvantages of using a benchmarking process? Well, just think about it there for a minute. What do you think would be advantages, first of all, of the benchmarking process? Well, we would expect it to motivate to improve against competitors if we are using competitor benchmarking. So that's certainly good news if we're motivating our managers to do better and better than our direct competitors. It may also ensure best practices are applied.
So for example, if we do process or activity benchmarking, we might discover that a different company has a far better way of running a particular process. We can then apply that to improve the performance of our company. Benchmarking focuses on relative performance. And this is something that may also improve motivation. So instead of just looking at a division or the company as a whole as this standalone entity that we're going to measure the performance of, we are taking a wider view and looking at it in relative terms. So if our sales have gone down, that may not necessarily indicate that our company has performed poorly. If we benchmark against competitors, we may discover that their sales have also gone down and it's due to reasons which are outside of our control. Okay, so there are a couple of the advantages. What about the disadvantages then? Is there any downside? You thought of a few? Well, I would suggest, first of all, all this benchmarking and comparisons, it could be time consuming, which means it's costly to the company to run this process. Any other thoughts? What about our competitor benchmarking? Is that going to be easy to do? Do you think if we write a letter to our competitors asking them to give us all of their performance information that they'll just hand that over? I suspect not. There's going to be a lot of confidential internal information that our competitors are not going to want to give us. So it may be difficult to source information on other companies. And finally, like all performance measurement really, it may demotivate if the benchmark is inappropriate. So for example, if we're a reasonably perhaps small to medium sized company and we suddenly start benchmarking our sales volumes against the biggest company within our industry, that's going to be extremely demotivating for our sales manager who really have no hope of getting to those much higher sales volume within a short time frame.